Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here I'll be showing you how to restore a scratched, scuffed, or dull radio display. For this I'm using an aftermarket head unit display. This can also be applied to stock radios along with other clear plastic glossy overlays found throughout a vehicle such as a clock, shifter display, gauge cluster, etc. This cannot be applied to touch screens or screens with an anti-glare coating as it can cause damage. Also let me know what you think of my new logo along with my 4K video with the new camera. If you do remove the face of the radio or head unit, it does make the process a little easier. It's hard to see on camera here. The screen on the head unit does have some small light scratching and scuffs both on the screen and buttons. I do have a before and after comparison photo further on in the video to give you a better example. Ensure the display is clean and free of any contaminants which may cause damage during the polishing process. We will be working with polish for the largest area. Using a little more polish may be needed, so it's a good idea to cover up any of the buttons with tape. The tape will also cover any text labels. These labels are printed on the outside surface of the screen. Be extremely careful with them. They're not overly durable. When using a light polishing compound, this can remove the labels. Next is using Meguiar's M205 Ultra Finishing Polish. This is only plastic, so I would not recommend anything coarser. Mix the polish accordingly, then apply it to a soft cloth. Only a drop is needed as it's a small area, and we don't want to be left with any excessive buildup on the display where it can be hard to clean or it'll get stuck in any crevices such as around the buttons. Use your finger to work it into the cloth. This will keep the process fairly clean so there's minimal mess. Then work the polish onto the surface. Light pressure is only needed, don't become too aggressive where it can cause damage to the display. As mentioned earlier, this only applies to a glossy overlay. If your display has a satin finish, this process will damage it, just like satin paint. Apply more polish if needed to the cloth. Use your finger to work it onto the cloth before applying it to the screen. This will remove any light imperfections. If you have any deeper scratches, which you can feel with your nail, it may lighten them up with this method, but you cannot completely remove them. Inspect the area as needed. Working around the volume knob can be a bit tough. You'll have to work in a variety of directions to work around those more complicated areas. Once done with the main area, then remove the tape. While the button surfaces are not clear, they do have a similar black glossy plastic finish, so I can use the same method. With the surface of the cloth being somewhat moist with polish, lightly go over these areas. Do not overly saturate with polish. This can cause the polish to build up around the buttons, making it difficult to clean afterwards. The door on the USB and auxiliary port does have a clear plastic finish and receive the same treatment. The chrome trim portions did have some scratching as well. I did go over this area lightly and they were cleaned up too. And the buttons on the other side of the volume knob, these also received the same treatment. Once satisfied, finish up with a clean soft microfiber cloth for a final polish and to remove any polishing residue. The fibers will help clean up any residue around the buttons. If you have any excessive polish buildup and any cracks, a soft detailing brush may be needed. Here's a view before the final step. The one label next to the volume knob has been slightly removed. When this happens, unfortunately, there's no way to replace them. The clarity has greatly improved on the readout display along with the overall shine. The more time you spend on polishing, the better the outcome you'll get. This does take some patience. As a final step to protect the bare plastic from UV deterioration and repel any dust, use a plastic interior detailing solution. Here I'm using Inner Space from Lithium. A link to this product will be included in the video description. Spray this onto a microfiber cloth and apply it to the surface. I know there are quite a few people looking for a non-glossy interior conditioner, which doesn't leave a greasy film while providing that same look when you buy a new car. This is exactly what you're looking for. I'll have a review on this product in the future. Once it's been evenly applied to the surface, fold over the cloth to a dry area, then polish the leftover residue. With this being a glossy surface, you'll be left with a clean glossy finish. If you were to apply it to a satin style interior trim, such as a door panel or dashboard, you'll be left with a satin finish and I'll show you that in a moment. Here are the before and after photos and as you can see there is a big improvement in the display area readout, along with the surrounding black glossy areas. Even after turning the head unit on, there was a big improvement on the illumination clarity as well. 
As another example, this time using a digital clock readout. This is a small area. While I would like to remove it, I want to show it's possible to do this in place. Again, make sure the area is clean, free of any contaminants. Tape can be applied, however with some interior trim, tape doesn't always stick so well, so it can be done without it, just be careful. Apply the polish to a soft cloth, just like before, keep the area moist, and not overly saturated. There are some buttons in the middle of the display, so I don't want to get any polish around those areas. Work the polish into the surface, only applying light pressure. When satisfied, finish up with a microfiber cloth to remove any residue. Apply lithium inner space to the microfiber cloth and work it onto the surface. This can be applied to a variety of plastics, vinyls, etc. Fold the cloth over to a dry area, finish up removing any excessive conditioner and you're officially done. As you can see, I've also applied it to other areas of the interior as well. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.